Welcome back to Forum Chess Club. Today's video is all about the slave opening, which is Black's most popular reply to the Queen's Gambit. It begins with the move pawn to d4, pawn to d5, pawn to c4, and in response, pawn to c6. And during today, we are going to get a chance to take a look at this ultra solid reply to the Queen's Gambit. Let's take a look. The Slav is a reply to the Queen's Gambit. To play for the Queen's Gambit, White begins with the move pawn to d4. And then after the move pawn to d5, he replies with a very powerful move pawn to c4, offering a temporary pawn sacrifice to gain control over the center or force black to make some concession and holding on to the pawn on the d5. In the late 1800s and in the early 1900s, when the queen's gambit first became popular, players handling the black pieces defended against the queen's gambit either by immediately capturing on the c4 and this would be known as the queen's gambit acceptor. And then the idea was to play a pawn to c5 as quickly as black has an opportunity to do so. Or the other main alternative back in those days used to be pawn to e6. And both of these are still played today. But the other main idea used to be pawn to uh, e6 holding ground in, in the center uh, for as long as possible. And then late, only later figuring out how to achieve this uh, c5 advance. Usually, uh, once again after capturing on c4. Uh, but during those days, nobody really bothered with this little move pawn to c6. And this is because from a classical point of view, this move really uh, and actually seems a little unattractive. The major downside of this move c6 is that sooner or later, black generally wants to play that crucial move pawn to c5 uh, in, order to, in order to break up the center. And in this case, in the slave, uh, black when he does play c5, he will have wasted a tempo. Also, he will be temporarily depriving the knight on the b8 of its very logical square which is on c6. So why it is these days, the situation has completely reversed with the Slav now being hands down the most popular response to the Queen's Gambit. Well, to find out, we have to learn to think about the unique benefits of the move pawn to c6 in a unique way. In fact, there are two major reasons why the Slav has eventually emerged to the forefront as the most popular reaction to the Queen's Gambit. The first reason is that unlike the Queen's Gambit declined, which would have begun with the move uh, e7 to e6, Black retains the option of developing the bishop outside of the pawn chain. Quite often in the uh, in the slav, the bishop ends up either on the f5 square or in the g4 square. And it can either exert real influence over the center or it can simply exchange itself off. Now it would be a mistake to say that this is the only main reason why black plays the slav. Uh, because there are times when black chooses in the slav not to deploy the bishop outside of the pawn chain. The other hidden benefit in this position is that the move c7 to c6 increases black control over the uh, b5 square and this comes in handy because black will often capture on the c4 in the slav. Now in the slav defense because of the threat of b7 to b5, uh, white needs to be much more careful about how he gets uh, goes about recovering the pawn. Let's take a look at some variations to illustrate these main points. The main line of the slav begins with the standard developing move knight to f3, knight to f6 and then simply knight to c3 for white. From here, black has few major options and each of them are very interesting. But the first thing to know about this position is that black doesn't want to play the move bishop to f5 just yet, even though that might appear natural. And the reason for this is that the b7 pawn is temporarily made vulnerable so white has a very strong surprise prepared with the move pawn takes d5 and then queen to b3. Attacking the b7 uh, b7 pawn and also exerting some influence over the d5 square. Surprisingly the defense on the b7 is very uncomfortable for black in this position. He not only needs to defend the b7 pawn but he also needs to do so in a way that doesn't allow him to lose control over the d5 pawn. For example, once after pawn takes pawn and then queen to b3. If you would simply play moves like queen to c7 or queen to c8, in both the cases, white would simply play knight takes f5, winning a free pawn. Also, uh, the move queen to uh, b6 is not an answer for it because white would simply once again play knight takes d5 and if black tries uh, you know, capturing the queen which is on b3, we would throw in an intermediate move knight takes f6 check. And if uh, black takes knight on d5, white captures on d5 and black does not have adequate compensation for the pawn. So backing up the position after queen to b3, uh, black would actually needs to make a serious concession here by moving the bishop to c8. Okay. Uh, when after the, after any move, perhaps a bishop f4 for example, uh, there's no questions that white has a tremendous lead in the development. The other reaction would be pawn to b6 
which is probably the most sensible reaction, but leaves black seriously weakened on the queen side. Simply bishop to f4 once again. Now black need to worry all kind of threats to the queen side, such as the knight or bishop, eventually appearing, appearing on the uh, b5 square. On, uh, ordinarily black would simply play uh, a6 in this kind of scenario, uh, in this kind of structure sooner or later. But because white has induced the weakening move for b7 to b6, black will have a serious problems defending his queen side. So backing up to the position after knight to c3, if black cannot play bishop f5 just yet, he needs to find something else to do first. And one of the most popular idea here is pawn takes pawn on c4, which is known as the Slav proper. And now here comes the secret of the uh, Slav defense. As we talked about earlier, black inclusion of the move uh, c7 to c6 in the Slav make his thread more stronger after he captures on the d uh, take c4. In this position, he is actually ready to play the move uh, b7 to b5. So if white simply continues with the standard looking move pawn to e4, he finds himself running into a little bit of trouble after the move b7 to b5. For example, if white were to try to take a crack at these pawns with uh, a2 to a4, he did quite quickly find that this simply doesn't work because after b4, the knight is destabilized on c3. And in this situation, he even loses control over the e4 pawn. But if uh, white were able to be uh, played safe, even if it instead of uh, playing uh, e4, if it plays e3, uh, so that this position will not be hanging, the pawn will not be hanging, but uh, black would still continue with the move pawn to b, uh, b5, and after a4, he would still continue with the move b4. And yes, it's true that after knight to a2, with, we no longer have a hanging pawn on e4, and we are attacking both the b4 pawn and the c4 pawn. So white will recover his pawn in the situation. But theory still says that black has a fine game after the move e6 and bishop takes e4. And this is because even though white has recovered his pawn, he does uh, he's done so at the cost of a very popularly placed piece on the a2. So what this structure um, shows us is that black threats to play b7 to b5 is in fact quite serious in this position and is one of the main feature of the slab defense. To avoid this problem, White universally plays the outstanding move a2 to a4 here, preventing the b7 to uh, b5 move outright and aiming to recover the pawn uh, next move perhaps uh, pawn to uh, e3. Uh, this is a solid plan and leads to a slight initiative for white, but black can claim a couple little more victories in this position. First of all, he is now fully justified in playing the move bishop to f5, which is exactly what he does activating the white squared bishop uh, before playing e6. And now we see one of the ideas that black had in mind here. He has deprived white of the opportunity to play queen to b3 by uh, by first of all, you know, playing the move uh, pawn uh, move uh, d takes c4. Black's second idea is that by calling out the move a2 to a4, uh, black hopes to prove that b4 square is vacant square. And this will work nicely for black since he will uh, station a bishop here and this bishop will no longer be able to be pushed away by the typical move a2 to a3 which white would normally have in such situations. Thus black is setting his sights now on playing the uh, move pawn to e pawn e7 to e6. Let's just show th this on the board and bishop to b4. And if you really think about it, there is an important strategic justification to this idea as well. Since by playing the bishop on b4, black is also indirectly influencing the critical e4 square and making it harder for white to achieve the move e2 to e4. Now, we get a chance to see all this in action most, uh, most easily if white plays the typical move pawn to e3. However, I do briefly want to men mention that white has another modern move here which is knight to e5. And this leads to fascinating play for white since white aims not only to capture on the c4 in a different way but more importantly he is aiming to uh, try to solve this problem of achieving the move uh, e2 to e4 by first making it possible for him to play f2 to f3. But today I simply want to show the classical move which is e2 to e3 and then e6 <coughs> bishop takes e4 and now that move bishop to f4. And here we illustrate one of the black's main idea. Uh, black will argue that getting white to play a2 to a4 has worked in his favor since this b4 square is now very difficult to dislodge the bishop from uh, just as we said. <clears throat> and thus black has achieved active placement of uh, both of his uh, bishop in exchange for a slight space disadvantage in the center. White will work really hard over the next several moves to organize the move e3 to e4 and build a mobile center while black will both aim to avoid this and organize his own counterplay. 
The position here is highly interesting with chances for both the side and is well regarded as being very solid for black. I hope you have enjoyed the brief tour of the slab defense. Even though we just uh, just touched the surface, I hope you see how rich and fascinating this opening is. And I hope you have begun to get some insight into why modern players have begun to prefer the slab defense over the Queen's Gambit declined or the accepted. Black has tremendous opportunities of gaining active counterplay in this opening and with a little bit of homework, this opening should be a very interesting opening. Thank you for watching and see you again with another opening.